Hey guys, it's Craig here from the Builder Beamer series. Um, Nick is uh, just got back from Canada yesterday, so he's uh, taking a bit of a sabbatical from working on the car, but I think he's uh, itching to get back. Um, but we just thought that um, in addition to the videos that we've been doing so far, which has really just been showing you what we've done to the, to the racing car, um, we felt it might be quite interesting for some of you to have a look at how we've actually done these things and maybe also a little bit more discussion on why the various um, options and mods and things like that have been done. Um, so we've also quite aware that some of the videos are very long-winded and, and, and uh, we try and you know, cram a lot in because we don't get around to doing them as frequently as we should. Um, so we'll try and keep these ones quite brief um, and tackle you know, discrete topics one at a time. Um, so that if, if anybody is interested in, in doing any of these mods for themselves, uh, that they understand uh, kind of what we've experienced and uh, how to go about it. So um, yeah, with that said, uh, let's uh, start with the first option. All right, guys, so one of the things which uh, we experienced um, even when we were using the car uh, for, for time trials in standard form was uh, the car is very sensitive to oil starvation, uh, particularly on circuits where you've got very long um, high G turns. Um, if you're not running your oil at absolutely full level at the top of the dipstick, or as some guys have recommended, well above that, half a liter or a liter above the full mark, uh, then you do get oil surge. And that's simply because the oil goes sloshing around in the pan and the pickup simply sucks air uh, momentarily. And the way you pick that up is um, you'll, you'll pick up um, hydraulic lifter tick, particularly if you get back into the, into the pits. You may not hear it when you're on the track, um, but you'll hear it in the pits now. That in and of itself is not a train smash, but if you're getting a lifter tick, it means you've lost oil pressure. That's not good for your engine. So we want to obviously take care of that and see what we can do. So the installation of a baffle plate is one of the uh, the common mods which uh, which the guys do that, that do end up tracking these cars. And um, in standard form, the cars actually have this kind of little excuse for a um, for a baffle. In fact, it sits it sits something like this, um, and I can't for the life of me think what purpose it serves because it's so little um, it can't really do much um, but that is it's, it's held in place in in three points with um, with aluminium rivets which are effectively pressed or um, I think you know, I think they must be pressed into holes at these three locations um, over here and to get it to get it out one needs to drill off or grind off those those big kind of mushroom head rivets um, and then you can can lift this baby off um, and, and then you're free to start fashioning your own baffle plate. Now, um, before I get into the detail of that, just to point out, um, the state of the sump now is, is, is extremely clean. I've spent quite a bit of time cleaning it up. Um, you know, there's one thing that I, that I hate, and that is uh, working with dirty parts. And certainly taking dirty parts off a car is, is often not avoidable, um, but putting dirty parts back onto a car is just, is just sloppy in my view. So um, I do make a point of, any, of having any part that comes off the car that has to go back on does get meticulously cleaned. Now, um, cleaning, you know, from the greasy stuff and the oily stuff is, is generally quite easy. But what you see um, here, and this was really all over the inside of the engine and it's all on the inside of the sump, is, is effectively a varnish. Um, this stuff does not respond to petrol or, or, or conventional degreases. Um, and in fact, in the past, I've had literally no joy. So you'll find a lot of guys just clean it up and it's functionally clean. You know, there's, no, there's nothing greasy on there, but it still looks pretty crappy with this varnish on there. I have I ever found a product which um, sorts that out incredibly easily. Um, and that's this, this stuff over here. It's called Oil Away. You can get it at Builder's Warehouse. But it's it's just phenomenal. I mean, it um, it it literally dissolves the varnish. Um, in some cases, where it's really baked on together with some some crud and grime, you you know you need to agitate with a with a stiff uh, bristle brush or something. But it's awesome and really helps getting your stuff clean. So if you do like getting your 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 in, engine internals and whatnot really clean, go with this stuff. It's really brilliant. Builders Warehouse, yeah, and it's not too expensive. I think it's about 150 bucks um, a bottle. So. Um, yeah, so back to the baffle plate. Um, effectively, what, what we've done here is to fabricate this out of um, some more of this uh, aluminium plate we've got, which is 1.6 mil uh, plate. We picked up um, basically a full sheet of it from, um, uh, from non-ferrous metals in Pretoria. I believe they've got branches in Joburg and, and uh, I think... I think maybe in KZN or, or, or the Cape as well. Um, also not terribly expensive. 
uh, but we just end up using this for pretty much everything. Um, this has uh, been used for the um, internal uh, door card replacement, so basically the, the, the cover on the inside of the of the driver's door, which is it's compulsory that once you've gutted the door that there's a cover on that, so we've used the, the aluminium sheet for that. Um, and, you know, things like the airbox, which we which we fabricated for um, for the cone air filter for the cold air intake, made from exactly the same stuff. So it works. You know, it's it's thick enough to be to be tough and rigid. Um, it's still certainly light enough, and you can you can work it with hand tools. You know, cut it with uh, with a jigsaw or with a um, you can cut it with a nibbler, um, or you can cut it with a grinding wheel. Uh, so depending on the application, um, jump through those three things. Hole saws um, obviously work well as well. So no problem. And then you know you can even fabricate little little brackets and things like that. In this case, we've we've done uh, we've done a couple of brackets as well. So the process of of building this baffle plate is actually quite painstaking because uh, you do a tremendous amount of of kind of um, fit and and then you know grind and um, and file and then back in and out back in and out uh, until you get a reasonable fit um, and you see that I actually have another one here this was this was my first attempt and I actually had it in I was I was reasonably satisfied that I'd used a, a piece of um, of, of uh, scrap um, aluminium that I had left over, which looked like it was pretty much the right size. This cut over here was already there, and once I had it in it, I just I just couldn't I couldn't deal with that big gap there. So I I decided to redo the, redo the thing. So it takes about an hour and a half of of work to get that done. Once you've got those um, those mushroom heads. Uh, um, ground off and whatnot you are left with a hole um, particularly if you drill them out you'll drill very easily and quickly straight through the, the, the end of the sump so you get a bit of a shock uh, but you're going to tap those holes out to m6 and um, and then there's a further there's a fourth um, landing over here where you can actually put a fourth bolt in to be honest the fit of this thing is so snug that it doesn't need it uh, but i decided to put it in anyway the one thing to bear in mind though is that this uh, hole here basically runs straight into that. So you have to use very, very short uh, bolt over there. So it literally, it's probably about six millimeters long that I've trimmed that, that cap screw down to. Um, and then from a ceiling point of view, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of silicon. I, I think uh, it just gets used far too often to, to mask uh, sloppy workmanship. Um, I far prefer, prefer thread lockers and thread sealers. They, you know, they tend to do the same job. Uh, you know, a thread locker is a thread sealer as well. So red Loctite, um, which is, you know, designed to withstand heat and vibration and all good stuff, um, will also seal this up. So um, these four cap screws have been... Um, installed with uh, with red Loctite, and I'm uh, pretty confident that they won't leak. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, the positioning of the hole is one of the toughest things because it's very hard to measure. You really have to just eyeball it. Um, cut that out with a um, a bimetal hole saw, um, and have test fitted it, and it all fits up just fine. So yep, looking forward to to this giving us a little bit more consistency with oil pressure once we're on the track. Okay, guys, so yeah, thanks, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, keep subscribed to the channel. Until next time, ciao.